a lot of people think driving a race car is easy, just like driving their car down the hi highway. But when you pull in 4G um, and the sort of forces, you almost have to be Olympic fit to, yeah. be, to drive these cars to a high standard. And the last yeah. race I had, because you're, you're pretty much an enduro driver, and the last race I had is the first time I've had a race for an hour. And uh, I loved it. Uh, to me, that's it. Seems like uh, it's a, it's almost like you're meditating. It's the same braking. It's you know, yes. It's you actually switch off from everything that's going on, and it's yeah. It's it becomes un unconscious driving. Yeah. The first few laps of a race, you're hyped up and you're in tune with what's going on, and then gradually it becomes unconscious, and you're doing things in reaction, and you don't even realise you're doing them. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you prepare yeah. for something like that? Like, so how do you prepare? for you know Age of Le Mans series race week what, what what's that sort of look like well I mean I've been fortunate enough to be, be driving these cars since 2013 now and done Le Mans four times so a lot of the skills that I have now uh, have been learned over years and years and years um, but for example over the Christmas period I've just been back to the UK um, you have to train every single day even on Christmas day try and burn off the burn off the turkey yeah. <laughs> so you don't get heavy uh, which is easy to do in a freezing cold England when there's when it's dark, yeah, dark outside sure. and not like, much it's like exercise winter everyone around. stops yeah so yeah training um, making sure you're focused on the track that's coming up next so you watch the onboard you're looking at the data you can't really afford to let the rust grow and it grows quick so if you have three weeks out of the seat uh, the rust is the easiest way to think 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 of it is that the rust gradually grows um, and the longer you're out of the seat the rust increases so the more you drive nice and polished uh, yep, the skills so are it's like anything in life yeah so we have sim simulators. I have a simulator at home, or I did, or not before I moved. <laughs> but um, training on the sim is very important. Watching the onboard vi videos. I believe you've got a simulator yourself, yeah. and you do training, so yeah. you know how Love important that. I think that is. So before going to a track, you know, racking up about a hundred, hundred laps or so. So when you actually get to the track, and it's it's almost yeah. identical. Well, it, it is identical in the visual aspect of it. Yeah. And I think even if you know the track, um, you're still just like polishing up on your skills. Uh, but if you go to a brand new track, which you've never been to before, these days uh, the sim is replicating the whole track. You can download the circuit. And for example, here at the bend on a 7.7 mile uh, K sur circuit, drivers from Europe were spending hours and hours on the sim. So they arrive on their first lap and they, they know the braking points, the gears. They know if it's a left or a right. This track's got brows and undulations. So it's hard to see what's coming up next yeah. so it's critical to yeah be have a sim and train on the sim especially with the young kids now they're all they're all visual personalities because they're also used to playing computer games and stuff so yeah to to focus on that and uh, drive the sim and tune into the track that you're about to race at is really important so that's the visual side of the things is that you know do you follow a diet or like you do you actually have a training schedule or are you you know do you put it together yourself or do you have a coach or in in the past when i've been driving for teams i've had a dedicated coach uh trainer um i had a nasty accident about two years ago so i've probably trained more in the last year and a half than i ever did before uh, to build up the I broke my back and i had to build up the mu muscles again um i was laying down for four well, about four and a half months uh, in a brace uh, when I broke my back and I was amazed how quickly your muscle wastes away um, when you just lie in there and you can't move and a brace keeps you stationary um, yeah I lost all my neck mu muscles that had built up from the age of nine from driving these sort of <coughs> vehicles but wouldn't it doesn't that gain muscle um, when I'm laying oh, down when you're, when you're not doing anything yeah so. when I'm not moving at all on the sofa for four and a half months waiting for the bones to heal so why are you talking about that that was um, so that was your crash in 2017 that's right end of the year and yeah. uh, we're hopefully uh, if you can send me that on board no we've seen it actually uh, we'll play it actually so you can see it <laughs> That, that is a fucking horrific accident. And it was a big one, yeah. So do you wanna, do you wanna talk us through, we've got you at about 240 you were traveling. Um, yeah, that that's what? correct. Yeah, I was at Abu Dhabi, Golf 12 hour. We'd won it the year before and we were trying to win it again. We were in the number one car um, and basically had a complete brake failure. So I think I was five hours into the 12 hour 
um, had, was in my second stint. I'd been driving for about three hours. Was coming towards the end of the stint and came into turn 11 on the back straight. Uh, 240 k's and the brake pedal just went straight to the floor. It's like that number one nightmare for every racing driver that it's the one thing you don't want is no brakes from high speed. Um, and it was a tight hairpin corner. So from sixth gear in a first gear, 240 k's, brakes went to the floor nothing really you can do now in these like uh, there's no it's just a paddle shift there's no handbrake yeah. there's no ejector seat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been the only thing that could have saved you yeah, there's no parachute because that that's at 240 k's an hour like you know the average person hasn't been over 200 k's an hour and you're on a you're on a um you're on a racetrack, albeit well, well and good. It it said that it imp- it registered forty one Gs. I think it was more than that. I think it was up to ninety eight Gs, because ninety eight G was where the sensor stopped working. 